Good morning. This morning I'm going to be going over question three of the RCT 3611 uh, exam paper. When I have a look here, it says that this is advanced graphical user interface programming. And I see it's a third level module. This is the May June 2016 exam paper. I'm only going to do question three. Uh, I found that it's yeah, I haven't touched on Visual Basics for a while, but uh, I do have some knowledge of it. So basically, question 3a, um, they want you to start completing codes um, and filling in the missing uh, gaps. So I had to revert to Murek's book and have a look and see how things are done. Um, and yeah. What I noticed is the first one here, it's asking us to find out um, what value or what variable should be declared. As you can see there, it's saying protected EMP name and protected EMP monthly salary. Um, if you have a look here, you can see there it's got a return EMP name. Um, so what I did was I had a look and I saw, okay, there's an EMP ID but there's nothing mentioned over here for EMP ID. So there in line 18, they basically giving you the answer for the first one. So this is my code actually typed out in Visual Basic. Um, so I've gone and added it in there. All right. And then this, the second one they're asking us, um, what is the data type of this imp, imp month monthly salary and if you scroll down here to a public property you can see the data type says it's going to um, return uh, properties as double so you can uh, know that the variable will also have to be of type double so as you can see I've added it as double so that's the answer for answer two um, number three it basically wants you to identify the missing uh, variable that should be going here. Basically in this here, what's going to happen is the user is going to send a string command, like a name, to, uh, to Visual Basics, to this function, public sub, new. And then on this name, it now needs to set a parameter. and uh, closest parameter to that is the EMP name. So you'll see here I've said that EMP name is now being set. And the reason why it's being set is because this is a protected uh, a protected variable. So it's not accessible directly by one of the outside classes. If you go and read up about um, public, private, uh, protected um, you'll you'll find out that each one represents um, a different meaning, and the protected one allows any of uh, this class and any subclasses within uh, that inherit from this base class um, access to these protected uh, member variables, but they will not allow direct access through a main code. So your main execution code won't allow and give them access. So that's why um, that EMP name would be set over here. Then this, the fourth one, they're busy asking us now, what are we setting here? Are we setting a function? Are we setting a property? Um, and also, uh, if you read your notes, you'll see that if something has uh, only got a return variable or a get, then the property is a read-only property. And that you can see from this line 16, where it shows read-only. Um, you can have two options. You can have read-only, write-only, or allow read and write. And this is a, an example of a read and write, where it doesn't declare read-only or write-only. Okay. So obviously on this one, we're saying that it's only I've got one uh, property, which is a get property. So we want to be able to say that it's a read-only property. And now don't go and follow this example here, because this is actually wrong. I 
I try to do it exactly as what they've got it here. And uh, VB refused to acknowledge the read-only property appearing after here. It picks it up as a name. So you have to put it in that order where it must be public read-only property. So my answer for option four is read-only property. Okay. Then for number five, if you have a look here, this one confused me a little bit because if you have a look, even on VB, it doesn't accept this V as double um, option here really to set anything. They should have carried on specifying something here, value as double. So what I've done is um, I've just assumed that this V is being passed into the function. Okay. And yeah, uh, the get for the get part, that's easy. We know that it's monthly salary. So we're just returning this basically this variable. So I've got it here. Return employee monthly salary. Uh, but the set part, I've gone and I've put the em employee monthly salary equals V. Because um, I'm assuming that that's what's happening here, yeah, is that they're passing um, this V to the property, and then the V needs to be set. And it needs to set a variable, which is obviously the EMP monthly salary. So those are my options for option six. Uh, okay, so that is 3A covered. Now, 3B was the exciting bit. This is the part that I've done. 3B says, write the code for a class called developer, which inherits from employee class in the previous question. Override the employee calc function based on the following rules. Okay. And there's nice 12 marks there. Um, so what I did was, if you have a look, you have to change this function to the override function, overridable first. But I don't think that for this exercise they really require that to be done. All they wanted you to do was write the class uh, developer, which I've done over here. I've declared it as a public class developer because I want it to be able to be accessed from anywhere in my program. And I've added the inherits employee, which means that it will um, take from the base class employee. Employee is the base class and now developer is uh, like a subclass of employee. Okay. And then what I've done is I've said here yeah, the public overrides function uh, calc annual tax as double. So I've just basically copied the, uh, the function that they've got over here and all I've done is I've put the overrides option in the middle or just after the public. That is how VB wants you to do it. Okay. Then what I looked at and I was looking and I was thinking, okay, uh, I started writing annual annual amount. We want to be able to have an annual amount uh, that gives us uh, the annual earnings because that's what they're basically saying here. A developer that earns less than a hundred thousand annually. And in all our declarations, none of them um, have an annual salary. They've only got a monthly salary. So we have to create an annual salary. So I've said uh, dim the annual amount as double. Um, I've declared that inside of the function. Uh, but you could also declare it outside uh, the function if you wanted to. It would obviously go straight after this inherits and you could specify it here. But I've declared it inside of the function. Okay. And then what I saw here on question one, they said, okay, let's first read the question. Write the code for a class called developer which inherits from employee class in the previous question. Override the employee calc tax function based on the following rules. A developer that earns less than 100,000 annually is taxed at 10% on the first 50,000 and 5% on the remainder. Now I thought, oh, sure, but okay. So now they're splitting the percentages up. So what I decided to do was declare two variables 
of type double that would hold the um, value of the first amount and hold the value of the second amount. Okay? And the reason why I've done that is because annual annual amount could be the fifty thousand, it could be forty thousand, it could be thirty thousand. They saying that earns less than a hundred thousand. So we have to assume that it's not only less than a hundred thousand, they could earn less than fifty thousand. And so that's why I've added these two uh, extra variables here. The first, my annual amount, uh, calculates the employee's monthly salary times 12. Then I get my annual amount. Okay. Then I specify if the annual amount is less than 100,000, then it must check. And I'm saying that if the annual amount is less than or equal to 50,000, because that's what they're saying, the first 50,000 is taxable at 10%. Then I will say, it must return the annual amount times the 10%. Okay, So that's what it will do. Calculate the annual tax and we'll say that's what the amount is. I'm basically using the same formula that they took over here. But instead of me adding the times 12, I've already done the times 12 because they, they want me to base it on the annual salary. So then I... Um, I return that uh, figure, and if it's not if if it's not less than uh, if it's say it's greater than fifty thousand, um, in between fifty thousand and less than a hundred thousand. Because remember, I don't have a less than equal to. They've said less than, so I've used only a less than. Okay. Then I say the first amount is the fifty thousand. The second amount is the annual amount less the first amount. Okay? And then what I've done is I've told it it must return the first amount times the 10% uh, plus the second amount times the 5%. And I've put them in brackets because you know that normally the multiplication works before the addition. But just to make sure I will protect myself that that's that's how I want it to work. I've just added the brackets. So there's no need for the brackets, but I've just preferred. It makes the code look better, easier to understand, and it will definitely give the result that they want. Then the second one says, a developer with an annual salary that does not match rule one, but earns less than 200000 is taxed at 12% on the first 100,000 and 10% on the remainder. So there I've also specified if the annual amount is greater than or less than, um, less, yeah, greater than or equals to 100,000 and the annual amount is less than 200,000, then if the annual amount is, the, is 100,000, it can just calculate the 12%. However, if it's not, then it must use the uh, first set the first amount to a hundred thousand, the second amount to the annual amount less the first amount, and then it must return the first amount times the twelve percent and the second amount times the ten percent. Right. Then, because there's no other rules after that, so I've just left it in the, an else statement. And because uh, their third one says a developer with an annual salary that does not match rule two is taxed at 15% on the first 200,000 and 12% on the remainder. So I've said that if the annual amount is 200,000, then return the annual amount times the 15%. But if not, then the first amount is the 200,000, the second amount is the annual amount less first amount and then return the first amount times 15% plus the second amount times 12% and that's basically what they wanted us to write for code B. So I hope that this has been helpful and that it will help you gain these uh, what's it, 18 marks out of the 20. Uh, thank you for watching and good luck with the exam.